Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. Worldwide gender inequality is still widespread. Girls are still sold as child rights, denied access to education, verbally, physically or sexually assaulted. But some women do manage to beat the odds. Grammy Award winner Angelique Kijo is not only a big star, but she also devotes her time to helping girls and women in Africa. One of her projects is a foundation which provides education for girls. She's also a UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador. We met her in the U.S. Angelique Kijo is one of Africa's most powerful voices. Today she's rehearsing her new album in a tiny Brooklyn studio. <laughs> my latest album is Ev. That was my mother's nickname, and it's about African women. It's dedicated to African women, their beauty and their resilience. Gender parity problems in sub-Saharan Africa remain the worst in the world, especially in secondary education. Adolescent girls are usually obliged to quit school because of poverty or even because of the effects of the AIDS pandemic. It's been this way for generations. We are completely victimized. It's as though African women are the summit of suffering, as though there is no joy or beauty. But it's not so. Angelique Kijo was born in Benin, where even today less than one in three girls stays in school until the age of 15. Thanks to her mother's determination, Angelique was among the lucky few. She's now battling for others to have the same privilege. The young girls that I place in school, it's to enable them to go through secondary school and even to university to be the next leaders of the world, of Africa. Or at least to change, transform Africa to a different vision, working with progressive men who have the same vision. One third of the world's girls are married before the age of 18 and one in nine are married before the age of 15. For Angelique, this is at the heart of the problem. We must stop treating girls like fresh meat, giving them to old men near the end of their days and who already have many children of the same age as the young girls they're taking to bed. It's a tradition that gives us no honor. Through her support group, Batonga Angelique is helping girls in Benin, Cameroon and Mali. Batonga was a word she dreamt up as a little girl going to school, as a response to boys who would tease her about wanting to study. Today, the word symbolizes that little girl's struggle for education. How can we deny a continent its youth? A youth who could dream, who could have a future, who could have a job and not be obliged to emigrate. We can't have everything. We can't say to young Africans, stay where you are, don't come here, when we don't give them the means to build a life at home. Guess who we are talking to next? The first woman to drive a car in the enclave of Somaliland. The first woman there to travel abroad for higher education. One of the first to become a minister and work with the World Health Organization. Have you guessed yet? I'll tell you. Let's find out more about Edna Adan Ismail, the founder of the best maternity hospital in her region. Some true stories eclipse fiction. Edna Anans is among those. Founding the top maternity hospital in Somaliland was just the culmination of a list of achievements in an extraordinary life. She was the first woman from her country to go to the UK for higher education. She went on to carve out a career at the World Health Organization and become a government minister. I had that opportunity that very few girls uh, had at that time to learn to read and write. And something I was very passionate about because I love schools, I love learning, and it was a great opportunity for me. I consider myself very lucky. Edna Adan is a leading advocate of women's rights and education in a male-dominated world. Having broken down the barriers, she's an inspiration to others and was recently named one of the hundred most influential women in Africa. She says the maternity hospital, founded in 2002, is her way of passing on the privileges she received. Above all, the hospital is her home, the place where she lives and works. 
I decided that I would come here and I would build a hospital and spend whatever life and time God gives me here in Hargeisa, Somaliland, teaching and give, being an example for others to come home, to come back from the diaspora and rebuild their country. In Somaliland, one in eight children die during childbirth and mothers are also at serious risk. Since the hospital opened its doors, Edna and her team have trained more than 300 midwives and delivered more than 14,000 babies. It's just 20 years after the war, so there's a lot of health issues, there's a lot of um, issues with um, pregnant women, there's a lot of issues with, um, with the infant mortality rate and other health issues within sanitation. So it's very important to teach um, nurses and also midwives and give them the skills and the qualifications to help the community. Despite all her achievements, Edna Adan still retains a young girl's enthusiasm for new challenges and she puts that down to having had an education. If I hadn't gone to school, I wouldn't be here today. School is, is, is an opportunity that everybody should have regardless of whether you're a girl or a boy. Christina Zenato from Italy is one of the best shark diving professionals in the world, a scuba diving instructor and a teacher in the Bahamas where she lives. Let's have a look at how she manages to swim with sharks. She describes herself as a fish out of water, but most people call her the shark whisperer. Christina Zanato's passion for the ocean led her at the age of 22 to the Bahamas, where she learned to dive. 16 years later, she's still there, working for the Underwater Explorer Society, UNEXO, as a diving supervisor. The sea, the water, the ocean, the lake, the river's always been my passion. Maybe at, when, I moved, when I came here to learn how to scuba dive, that's when I decide, I realized that it could be my life. She also teaches specialized shark feeding courses, technical diving, cave and cavern classes to local teenagers. Every year, around eight students start this three-year science program as part of their high school senior project. My first love about sharks, I was eight. And I decided that one day I will grow up to swim with sharks. Using a little-known technique of caressing the markings and highly sensitive organs around the shark's head, she induces a kind of immobility. It looks like the shark is falling asleep. While it's in this state, the students are encouraged to feel and even kiss the shark's skin. She's going to be down in the water with us. She gives us the um, satisfaction of her years of experience, knowing that she's going to definitely be precautious with us. So it was really cool. She had us already calm. Now all of a sudden you have a flat jaw. And Christina's lessons continue on land. It's the skin that China. It is my biggest achievement, my biggest happiness that capability of being able to transfer how I see, how I feel to somebody else and know that that can be carried away, it is an amazing feeling. Oh, here. Christina was mentored here. by Ben Rose, a local legendary diver and explorer from whom she learned the art of shark feeding. She also shares his mission to teach youngsters respect for the sea. So many Bahamian kids, you know, uh, grow up and never even learn how to swim. And of course, I think that's probably the fault of the parents because they're, they're so afraid of water themselves that they instill that, that uh, fear in their kids. You know, so I think education is something that really will sort of improve that. The Bahamas is considered a shark haven with between 40 and 50 different species. Christina hopes that passing on her knowledge and passion for the sea will help preserve this paradise. So now it's over to you. How close do you think women are to equal rights? Do you have an interesting story? 
Do share your ideas and opinions with us on our social media pages. Goodbye for this week. Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.